This is the blue tarp special, which I bought sight unseen. I mean, I knew it was gonna need some work. And today I'm gonna find out just how expensive and how much, what work exactly it needs. So you're not gonna wanna miss the grand total at the end of this jewel right here. Welcome back to Jimmy's World. We are saving this Aztec that's up in Alabama. Last time we did get it started, kinda, not without some stuff we found. And we exploded a starter, which that's the first time I've ever seen that. It like, it was pretty bad. Today, I've spent a bunch of money on a bunch of boxes and I think that should be what we need to get it started. So we're gonna get this plane one step closer to being able to fly again after 15 years or something. It's been a long time. Like to introduce to you uh, Private Pile, Humvee, and whatever the heck we're gonna call that thing. I still don't know what we're gonna call it. See what you wanna think. That's an electric car that we're saving for an excellent gentleman uh, who passed away, Richard. So we're gonna see if we can't fix that thing up and get it going again on his behalf and raise some awareness for the diabetes. Let's grab a couple boxes. Oh yeah, I love seeing this one. Lycoming Rush. And we've got priority mail. That tape is my favorite tape ever. It's like Christmas time. Aircraft spruce. Oh my gosh. Oh, we've got the manuals for it. A couple of books that go to that airplane. Oh, and I took the service manuals and the parts manuals out when I was looking for parts. So we still got three other books that go into this that are not in here now. And those, a watt box. That's, you know, the light unto my path. And the crazy thing, oil filters for some reason are unobtainium now. I don't understand why, but you cannot find a flipping oil filter for one of these airplanes. They're back ordered for months and months and months because of something, supply chain or whatever it is. I don't get it, I don't know. We were able to get our hands on a couple though. I know people, if you know what I mean. So the watt box, lighting. We're gonna be putting a whole bunch of LED lights all over that thing. It's just gonna be super bright. Oh yeah. Electrical connect bolts. So I learned that on that airplane, it was painted just before we got it and they took all the control surfaces off and then all the hardware and the bushings and all that stuff. Well, the hardware is gone. So we have to replace every bit of hardware for all those control surfaces, the ailerons, the flaps, all of it. So that's a whole bunch of just washers and bolts and nuts and all that kind of stuff. And here, that's what I got the organizers for. I'm gonna need a knife. I legitimately don't remember what's in these boxes. What is that? Oh, wiring harness. So the Lance Air, we put those magnetos on there, the electronic magnetos on both sides. In the installation instructions, it does say you gotta have an extra battery for one side. Maybe in one of these boxes is gonna be our little battery thing, standalone battery deal. And this is the harness for that so that we can get those electronic mags back on there correctly and properly so they'll work correctly and properly. That's a Cameron go fast part. We'll put you over here. Oh yes, so you guys have been sending us things. I really love it, appreciate it. We got aviation filmed history documentary about all of just the history of aviation and a lot of military type stuff and civilian things. Love that. Thank you so much for sending some pretty cool stuff. Ooh, we got lots of good stuff. Whole bunch of electrical connectors and fuse holders and more hardware and washers and bolts and all kinds of good stuff there. Oh yeah. And then your fancy wire crimpers right here, the good ones. So you guys quit giving me bad comments about the junky ones that I've been using. Slowly but surely building up my arsenal of the proper and correct tools. Lots of wire, mil spec wire before the gift that is in this one right here. We're gonna be putting something that's going to require lots of wire. Ah, that's funny, it rhymed. Oh yes. This is a magic box for Cameron. This is that battery backup. So it's got a lithium battery in it and then you plug it in with that harness. It charges this, but whenever that battery goes offline, it runs off of this one. So it bypasses the charging system and the battery that's in the airplane and goes off of this one. And this one's a three amp hour, which will give us like three hours of runtime for that magneto that's on there. That's what we needed. I don't know what's in this. I haven't opened this one yet, even though it's open. 
I haven't opened it. Another gift from Robert Gardner. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's fantastic. It is a Jimmy's World clear prop clock. Look at that. Get the reflection out of there. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate that. That will go up in the office. Really, really appreciate this so much. Uh, we'll open this box next. Ooh, look, hardware bolts. Lots and lots of specific bolts that go in specific locations with bushings that are in specific spots. Everything about an airplane, you have to be super duper dialed in. I went ahead and printed out, this is the 100 hour inspection. It's the annual, every time, every year, your airplane has to go in and get an inspection and they inspect everything. The spinner, look, look uh, check propeller air pressure, if you didn't know that. 10, 15 pages of things that you have to go through and check and that is your 100 hour inspection. And then if you find anything wrong, then you gotta fix it. Now, here's something a lot of people give me a lot of crap about. Even though I have what are called squawks, which are things that are not perfect on the airplane, it's still airworthy. The airplane doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be airworthy and safe to operate. So even though you can go through these inspections, some things you absolutely have to have fixed. Other things you can kind of get away with. Uh, great examples in the avionics world. You might have, let's say, an old ADF, which is, I don't even know what that stands for, but basically it's a way for you to navigate to little beacons. They don't even have those beacons anymore. How are you supposed to use that, right? So you can put an in-op sticker on it, or, I mean, that's the book way you're supposed to do it is just put an in-op sticker on it and pull the fuse or you know the breaker and go on about your day so there's lots of things like that a dome light you could have a light that's out or something like that as long as it's not one of the required airworthiness things you're good to go so we got our inspection we'll be going through this on that airplane up there i don't think we're going to be able to get it in annual up there however we can get what's called a ferry permit which means we have a authorized FAA mechanic, an AMP, airframe and power plant. They do the inspection on the airplane. They say, yep, it is airworthy for a flight from point A to point B, and then there'll be some stipulations. So we have to have the gear down. We have to go daytime VFR. We gotta go in nice weather during the day. Can only stop at this location for fuel or something like that. So it'll have all these stipulations in order for us to get the airplane from where it's at to where we need to get it to the shop to then have all the inspections and other work done to it so that it can be a legal, in annual, airworthy, safe airplane. That's probably what we're going to do. That's the plan is to go up there, get everything running and working, just check everything to make sure it's gonna be safe for a flight from up there, and it's about a three hour flight from there down here to Florida to the shop where Dr. Phil or you know whoever is gonna be the mechanic that's gonna be signing off on all this stuff, get it to them so that we can have a regular, you know, unlimited type of airplane where we can just fly it whenever we want, wherever we want. And it'll probably be a very slow trip and for the first time in, I wanna say it was like 15 years or something since that airplane has flown, what could possibly go wrong. What else is in this box? What do we got? Oh, boom, undercarriage, gumps check. This is the Jimmy's World version of the gumps check t-shirt. We got a clear prop, bam. We got a grandpa airplane. So uh, you're a grandpa only cooler because you got an airplane. And then a what could possibly go wrong shirt. Save to 310.com, go grab your merch there. We got lots of it. And we're gonna be starting to do some giveaways soon. So you're gonna wanna keep an eye on that. We also got more shirts coming every single month. We got fun sayings. Put in the comments, what kind of a shirt would you guys like to see? You know, a comment like a, it'll be fine. And then anything worth doing is worth doing twice. You know, those kind of a things. Save the 310.com. Bam. Oh, books and books and books and lots of books. A book for everything. We got airframe books that tell the entire history of that airplane, the fuselage airplane part of it. Then you got a book for each engine. And then you have a book for each propeller. And then you have another book for each 
what's called the airworthiness directive, which is what the FAA puts out of things that need to be updated, kind of like a recall on a car. So we have to log and show that all of those have been complied with and we're up to date on all of that stuff. Not including all of the history, like parts that we get to put on it, like what's in this box right here from Lycoming. Gotta love me some Lycomings. That bad boy right there. And they give you the yellow paper, important, do not discard. These have the documents in it that we have to send into the FAA saying, hey, we've put some really cool better stuff on it and we have to let you know about that so that it is in the record. And what's in the box you say? If I'm honest, this is kind of cheating. When we started that airplane up, the right engine, whenever it kind of started, it was and then it puffed to life and then it died again and then we tried to start it again and then it backfired and then exploded the starter teeth. Woo, something, that starter is hating life right now. Ready, clear prop. Woo, that does not sound good. Did that break the teeth? I think so. Oh, done broke the tooth. Awesome. We're done breaking, we broke the starter. But it started. <laughs> that sucks because that's like a thousand bucks. That starter is not in these boxes. We might have to pick that thing up on our way up there because the SkyTech starter place is actually like an hour away from where that airplane sits. So we might just go straight to the factory and pick it up right there. That would be awesome. This is my cheater left engine, the rebuilt one. It was the first time that one had ever been started since we rebuilt it. And that thing fired right up, ran phenomenally perfect. Can I get a clear prop? <laughs> After we ran it for like 15, 20 minutes, got temperatures up, did our first run, you know, break in on an engine, we did some mag drops and the left mag was totally crapped out. Smell the new paint burning smell. Mmm. <laughs> it needed some work. And they've been on there for five years, seven years or something. It's been a long time. So we're cheating and we're just skipping all that and going straight to the electronic ignition. Every one of my airplanes gets one of these because these, I don't say, I can't say they don't ever get rebuilt, but they've got a rebuild time of longer than the engines. Yes, you have to run a wire to it, which is what this is for, but it flipping works a thousand times better than those old points and condenser magneto things. Every airplane gets one of these things. Uh, on this one, we're doing the Lycoming ones. Surefly also makes a good one. That's what we put on Silver Bullet. And with those, you gotta have your spark plug wires, which are what those are right there, bam. We'll be replacing the left magneto on both engines. And why the left, you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. In the FAA regulations, there's called, yeah, we really need Pastor Jim to explain this better, uh, but I'll, I'll give it a shot. I've studied up on the good book and this is what a layman has figured out. Part 91 falls under the non-commercial use of airplanes. There's other parts to it and they fall in, it's like a tax code basically. So part 91 is what I fly under because I don't do it for hire or you know, I'm not a big airline or any of that kind of stuff. And in those requirements, the left magneto, the impulse coupling, the starting magneto has a requirement for five years or 500 hours, whichever comes first, they have to be taken off, sent off and rebuilt. Usually that cost is somewhere around, now it's about 700 to $900, depending on if they got to replace different parts in it or not. And then they give it a new stamp and a new piece of paper that says this is rebuilt, it's good for another five years or 500 hours. The Lycoming ones, you can pick up for, you know, depends on which engine, a four cylinder, six cylinder, something like that, but less than $2,000. You, you're gonna pay 900 bucks, period, every five years, or you can pay like $1,800, $1,900 and just get this one forever, you're done. You don't ever have to touch that thing again. They say, well, it's got two magnetos. Ah, you're right. But in part 91, the right magneto, the non-impulse coupling, the non-starting one, there's no time requirement for that one. So legally, you don't ever have to rebuild that one, but it does have to be based on inspection. So 
When you take it into Dr. Phil, he's gonna look at that right one, make sure it works, make sure there's nothing broken with it, and as long as everything is working the way it's supposed to be and it's safe, he says inspected, and you're good to go. You don't ever have to rebuild the right one. The left one, you have to rebuild. You gotta love the nuances with government stuff. Yeah, I'm just gonna skip all that junk and go straight to this, because frankly, it's just a million times better. Better fuel burn, your gap can be a little bit bigger. Just everything about it is better, mo better. I say we load all this stuff up. We go pick up a couple fellers and we hop in the airplane and see if we can't ski daddle on up there and go put some parts on and get that other engine running. We somehow have to figure out how to get all of this in that little cubby hole right there. Uh, that first. No problem. Hashtag Aztec life. Weight and balance, no problem. Let's roll, guys. Can I get a three-year prop? I am, money, I just like that. Big man on now. Fuel, oil pressure, all that, looking good. Okay, here we go. All right, everything's feeling good. Airspeed is coming up. Crosswind. There we go, getting light. 75 and rotate up. All right, everything's looking good. Positive rate, no more runway. All right, 2,500, we're gonna out here. Still do a little bit of a climb. Everything's looking good. And I've got a hundred pesos, Mexican pesos right here, paper money. How much do you think that's actually worth in US dollars now? 10, 12 bucks? That much? I thought it was like 20 or 20 to one or something like that. So yeah, five, 10 bucks maybe right here, boom. And I've got a $1 silver coin and now this does fluctuate up and down with the value of silver, and right now it's fantastic to buy. Anything under 20 bucks, I'm buying. The world's getting crazy, man. Yeah. And we just had a 75 basis point increase on the, the Fed. Fed. Yeah. Like, holy crap, they did it again. Just boom, boom, boom. And so you know things are gonna get rocky here pretty darn quick. So it's a 1921 Morgan, and this is worth, you know, 30 bucks. So a $1 coin is worth $30 because it's precious metals and it has intrinsic value. Even you could melt it down and trade it or do anything you want with it. Whereas this, just they print more and it gets worth less and less and less. Yep. Now the silver bullet, did you know that we're coming out with a coin for the silver bullet? It's gonna be a one ounce silver coin. Wow. That's gonna be awesome. Now, I didn't realize that it takes a crazy amount of work to create one coin. They have to do up a drawing and a proof, and then they have to stamp a small run, and then they gotta make sure you can actually see the artwork and stuff on it, and then they have to change it, and then they have to stamp another run and do it, and they melt it down each time. So they'll do a small run, they'll melt all that back down, and then they do another run with it, melt all that back down. When they finally get the everything, you know, straight away, Yep. Then they can go ahead and just print them out. So we're working on it. We're going to have a one ounce silver coin for the silver bullet, which is save the 310. Uh. And that all of the uh, the profit from all those silver coins and all of our partnership with Legacy Precious Metals, all of that profit goes into our Wings of Compassion nonprofit, where we give back to the veteran community. We serve the veterans through aviation, whether it's uh, a morale flight, just taking them up, getting them up in the air, or it's taking them to their appointments, things like that, or it's getting their license. Like this plane right here is being used by two students. I mean, they're pilots, but they're getting their multi-engine license in this. And in the military, even though they fly B-1 bombers, right, they cannot fly this airplane legally, which is the dumbest thing ever because the military license does not convert to a civilian license. So they have to take another test. They can't just hop in this and fly it. But yeah, we're partnered with Legacy Precious Metals. You know, I'm, I'm invested with them. I am so glad I did. Uh, you guys, give them a call. Tell them Jimmy sent you. The phone number is on the screen right now. 
They answered all my questions. They'll answer all your questions. It's free to call. It's free to ask a bunch of questions. Uh, they do paper investing, like with a retirement account, your IRA, 401k, stuff like that. You'll have to get the details from them. And you can also do physical, actual silver, gold, platinum, palladium, I think. They do some other uh, precious metals. The CEO, Charles, is stepping up to help with Wings of Compassion because he's a veteran himself. So give him a call. You'll be glad you did. Tell him Jimmy sent you. They'll make you sleep well at night like they do me. I sleep good yeah. at night knowing I've got some silver and some precious metals and uh, lead. What's the name of this place? Bob Sykes. Bob Sykes traffic, Apache 131 Delta Papa, turning final, 17, Bob Sykes. Uh oh, a little bit high, all right, rudder is alive. Our brakes ready to go, but they're not gonna be on. Gears down and locked, mixtures, props, pumps, all that stuff, looking good. Speeds just a stitch fast. Pull our power back, and there's a long runway. There we go. And Bob Sykes traffic, 242, single army helicopter, three miles to the west, inbound on the DOR Alpha. We'll be low approach, departing to the east, and to be CR. Bob Sykes traffic. And now look down the runway. Okay. Pretty much heading straight north from here. Are you ready? Silas, you ready? I mean, if we have any issues, we're gonna land straight ahead because we got lots and lots of runway. Got two good. Everything is looking good. Bob Sykes, traffic, Skyhawk 4330, Bob Sykes. Airspeed already alive. There's 70, 75, oh yeah. And we're way clear already. How's it going? Hey, Jimmy. Jimmy. Hey, great to meet you. Good great to meet you. Meet you. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah. Good so to see you. I hear we got some good stuff. Fixer upper stuff for the Blue Truck Special and for the 310. That's correct. We have. Alternator kit for the 310. You got starters for the the Aztec. And you guys manufacture these right here in that space behind us. Crazy, like 100 employees, machines, all the fancy bits. Mm -hmm. Lightweight starter yep. to replace the one that we exploded on Blue Truck Special. Yes. Definitely was not my fault for just burning that thing up. <laughs> Which were probably heavyweights to begin with. Yeah, yeah. they were yeah, heavy. The big ones. Oh my gosh. Yep. Yeah. Down in this box, mm -hmm. and in box number two, are the alternator changeover kits for the 310 because right. it has generators on it now. Exactly. And we're going to bring those into the 20th century. Yeah, the 20th, yes. <laughs> 20th century. Exactly. Fade for camera and we'll be the 21st century for that one. But exactly. We got to get rolling. It's already really hot. Get this stuff. And we still gotta fly another hour, not quite an hour, and then try to get this stuff put on to see if we can't get that engine started. Okay, sounds like a plan. Oh, hey, swag for us as well. Sweet. Now, my understanding is normal person would get these from QAA.com, which is you guys. Correct. Which is your company directly from you, or Aircraft Spruce, is that correct. right? That's correct. So either one of those two companies is where you'd actually order them, but he said, Hey, how far is Bessemer from here? Mm, so by up by Birmingham, so hour and a half. Hour and a half drive. Drive, drive yes. yeah. Yeah, and 20, 30 minute flight or something, mm -hmm. super close. So mm -hmm. that's why we just met them here and picked them up directly from the factory. Mm -hmm. We already have the back of that little Apache full. We're we're gonna gonna figure out <laughs> we're with this. We should have taken that other seat out. We're good? Yeah. Right, awesome. Because okay. okay. we're going to be at Grove and we don't have the room for the extra person with all the exactly. crap we got to bring up there. He's going to be on the next round. We'll bring the 310 next time. Oh, that would be cool. Here we go, boys. Number 167, sweet, short. Two good engines. Airspeed is alive. 
Everything's looking good. There's 75, and just like that, let it fly up. Build up our speed. And positive rate out of runway. All right, gears are down. Three, green, fixtures, props, kill switches, that. Woo! Holy crap, crosswind. Hey, we made it. Now we just gotta go fix an airplane. Yeah, can you can you check on top of my dresser for a key? I think it's a blue tag. It is there. And it says Aztec on it. Yep. Yeah, that that's it. Yep, it's the only one. Okay, thanks. Holy oh, God, are you kidding? You want to guess where the key is for the airplane? The only key for the airplane. <laughs> Hallelujah, glory, glory. We were able to find an empty hangar, and these guys at Bessemer were awesome and able to stick us in here for the day to do some work on it to get us out of the crazy sun. And it just randomly decided to rain on top of us too, but we're in a hangar, hallelujah. So someone, I'm not gonna mention any names, left the keys at home for this airplane 900 miles away. So what, we, we're just going through the bucket. We got a couple of Piper keys and a couple of Cessna keys. I'm just gonna check. Yeah, that's, that's locked. Okay, so let's see. That thing won't even fit in there. You know what, I bet if we just got a small screwdriver, we could just wiggle jiggle that sucker. I'm thinking we may just have to uh, Southern California this thing. Break the, into it. Break the lock out. Oh, well, it's a good thing that the work that we have to do doesn't really involve getting inside except to actually hit the starter button. But we also have ways of bypassing all of the inside and we can just throw the juice to it from right on outside. I'm just saying, if things got bad, well, let's start start with that engine over there. This is Zach. Say hi, Zach. Hi. We call him Zach Attack. We exploded, no, not we exploded. I grenaded the starter by trying to crank it and then the magneto didn't fire right and then the whole prop went kabam and then it just grenaded and literally parts were falling out on the ground. That sucked because that cost us a starter. That's like a thousand bucks. And it cost us one of these ring gears, which from a junkyard, probably a couple hundred bucks. And we just found out that it needs a front main seal on it, which the seal itself is not that expensive, 100 bucks, 200 bucks maybe, I don't know if it's in that much. It's the labor and the pain to get that all changed out. Also, we're gonna be replacing the magnetos, which that's something I do on all my planes. I go straight to the electronic ignition. I'm replacing the magneto on the back with an electronic ignition system because it's just way better than like homing EIS ones. What else do we even need to do on this? Just on the engine. And we haven't even really dug into the hoses. The vacuum pump should be okay. The oil filter, that's actually good because they just changed the oil about six months ago. It's not a turbo, so that saves us a whole bunch of money. Uh, we did put fuel in one of these bladders and it did not leak. So that saved us about $4,000 per fuel bladder. And there's four of them on this thing. There's six tanks all together. One out here on the wing, this blue one. Then you got another one right here. And then you got another one right there. Each one of these has a rubber bladder in it that holds all your fuel. And this one out here is just a big fiberglass fuel cell. And it actually feeds into this one. It's weird how it works. However, we did put fuel in that one and it didn't leak any fuel at all. So that saved us 4,000 bucks. We're gonna put some fuel in the other ones to see if those leak and fingers crossed, they're still good because they're expensive. Gears, landing gears, the struts seem to be okay. They're still holding up. Brakes, brake linings, 
Let's see. And this thing is, ooh, that thing's not even connected. So I had to buy all the very specific hardware. So we got this right here. They got special bushings and hardware that hold those together, plus, you know, the rest of it. I had to go find and buy all that. That was a couple hundred bucks for all the hardware that we got there. Not too bad. Just money. Just money. So, you know, go buy merch, watch the commercials, all that kind of stuff. The interior, praise the Lord, is fantastic it's like brand new the paint on it is brand new i would show you the interior but somebody left the keys 900 miles south of here we're just not going to talk about that but i am going to be updating some of the avionics that are in it they're pretty old new audio panel new gps maybe some other shiny bits there because let's face it this airplane's pretty stinking awesome it deserves it come back here on the outside honestly it doesn't really need that much the tires 2010, yeah, the tires are 12 years old. Crazy, they're not dry rotted at all. I don't see any dry rot on them, so they're definitely good enough to ferry home. I don't have to mess with the wheels and tires, at least for the ferry home. And then once we get this thing to where it's safe to fly and we get a ferry permit, we'll then take it down to Florida where we can be a little closer to home and then go all the way through this thing to put it fully in annual and make sure that everything is absolutely hundo percent so that I would feel safe to put my family in this thing. So like these brake lines right here, I'll probably replace those just because they're pretty old. They have a date code on this thing right here. Can't really read it right there, but we just wanna make this thing top notch, make sure it's good to go. Check the brakes just by looking at them. Brakes look like they got plenty of pad and the rotor looks really good on it. And like I said, when this thing was parked, it was parked because the guy was spending so much money on this airplane. He had all this stuff replaced and gone through, so it had a major, major, massive amount of money spent on it before he just kind of abandoned the project. It's good it's better than just an airplane that's been beat up and you know just left there out in the field to rot but it still needs some work fuel right here that we're gonna need to check and make sure all this stuff is good seals and all that kind of stuff oh good see they got all new lines on this which they should because it's they rebuilt this whole engine so they should have all new fuel and oil lines on it which they do and we'll need to make sure all the cables are all dialed in and safe locked in place where they need to be because we just put it on here to start it up to see if it'll run but before we go down the road with it take it on the runway or anything we're definitely going to need to just double check all this stuff make sure we don't have any bolts flying off as we try to leave the ground with it that would be a bad day we'd be able to start it with my arm through there i don't know if i silas do you think you can fit through that hole i think you could if you tried and one mystery I read in the log books in the STC when they had all this stuff put on that it had an external power plug put on it. But for the life of us, we've had five people look at this airplane and none of us can find out where that power plug is. The best guess we have is it's in this locked compartment. Why you would put a power plug inside of a locked compartment, completely beyond me, it's possible. Let me just show you something. What's in this box? Magnetos, a battery, and another starter, Skytech starter. Those miscellaneous hardware and the other things. That's over $7,000 just to get that engine started. Hashtag airplane life, hashtag broke life, hashtag worth it. That's what I'm talking about. I almost forgot, we're gonna be changing out the old lights that are on this thing, and that one up there is missing. It's supposed to have a beacon on the top of the tail right there. You see the round thing? And there's supposed to be a glass jar, mason jar looking thing on top of that, flashes and sparkles. The other thing is this tail light back here. That one is also, I mean, it's, it's there, and it probably works if we just put it on there. We're gonna be upgrading it with some Whelan LED lights, cause heck yes. If you're gonna do all this work and have such an awesome airplane, you gotta put the LEDs on there. That's a given. Now this back here should be good. They never touched any of this on the controls. So this stuff should be good to go. We just need to lubricate it, check it, make sure the cabling, all the pulleys, all that stuff are gonna be okay. Both sides and the flaps, all this is just, it's just kind of on here, not really connected to anything. Thing. I think that's it. I'm gonna try opening that side window. Uh, steel screwdriver. Oh, so you know, I got an idea. I'm gonna get the drill. <gasps> it wants to move. I hear you knocking, but you can't call me. Yeah, I had uh, an old Chevy truck with that little tri window. You can take any pocket knife, just slide it in, it go boom, and pop it right open, and then unlock the door and get in. That's probably why they had a lot of theft with those little tri windows and got rid of them. We knew it had a lot of stuff that needed some work on it, and that's what we're here 
We know it's probably gonna take three or four more trips up here before we can get this thing together to where we can try to fly it, even just attempt to fly it. We gotta replace the starter, that's what he's doing. That's step number one. And then he found the damage was a little bit more than what we originally estimated. Well, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. What I'm trying to say is it was broken, a lot of them. We thought if it was just one damaged, we'd be able to put the starter on, spin it around, and it would kind of jump that tooth. But turns out not the case. Uh, when that thing exploded, it like freaking took everything out with it. Not the end of the world. We knew we were gonna be replacing that anyway. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna have to take that thing off of there. Go get another one. We'll find one. Guess how much I just spent on fuel on this? Go ahead and put in the comments below. We used 85 gallons, which is frankly surprising to me, although it makes sense because we had so many takeoffs. What's your guess? Silas, how much you think? 200. I would love if that was anywhere close. I would even love if that was close. Oh. $580.01. <laughs> that was just one way. That's 1100 bucks every time we come up here. Just in gas. Yeah, where'd your credit card go? Uh, in the shredder, that's, they said it, it, that was its limit. Say, so we're gonna have to take that from you. Right, let's go burn this 600 bucks in fuel, man. Let's go.